So the trick here is to double track guitars using an overdriven or distorted guitar on one side, then overdub that guitar using fuss and pan that opposite of the first guitar. And why? Because you are adding a lot of grit, character, sauce and filth to your tone and in many cases I think you will end up with an overall better guitar tone and a better mix. But wait a second, you don't like fuss you say, that is okay. The goal here isn't to get a typical fuss pedal character guitar sound, you'll still be able to hear all the definition and complexity of your riffs with the help of that first guitar you recorded. The mix between the two guitars is the key right here. So let's see how we do this. First, let's record a silly little song using complementary overdriven guitar sounds on both sides. The way that I usually do this is to use one guitar into one amplifier on one side, uh, then record the same part with a different guitar into a different amp on the other side, and that sounds like this. That is not too bad honestly, but maybe a bit too nice sounding. So for the next example I will swap out the right side guitar with a fuzz guitar and I just got the Fjord Fuzz Fenris Fuzz. <laughs> And as you can hear, it's a wild, wild fuss. So will it work as I have promised here in conjunction with the driven guitar? Can we hear the complex chord shapes with numbers in them? And most importantly, will we get good tones? You decide. You see, I don't think it's too wrong of me to generalize on how guitar players have certain rules they play by. They like to divide their sounds up and use them accordingly. They want to play clean on that part and then they want drive on that part and maybe they will kick in a fuss for their solos. One does not simply mix these sounds together. And I think the thing we are most scared of when it comes to the fuss sound is the loosey goosey low and we like to play alone with fuss and maybe use it in a solo and play some David Gilmore solos. But once we try to use that with chords and riffs, we lose all the tightness and precision that we are after. So I was kind of surprised when I discovered this trick by accident. I was recording a song and I wanted to have a fussy guitar intro, but once the band entered the song, I wanted to have the more classic guitar wall to hit me in my face. So I recorded I recorded the intro with a spitty fuzz tone, but I continued to play through the rest of the song just for fun. Then I added the overdriven guitar part on one side, but instead of re-recording the fuzz part on the other side with overdrive, I just listened to these two guitars together. And I was completely blown away by the big and dirty sound I was hearing. Was it fuss? No. Was it distortion? No. I really couldn't tell but it sounded awesome and it was tight. The cleaner overdrive guitar helped the fuss guitar to be more distinctive and the fuss guitar helped the overdrive guitar to be a dirty little boy. Yeah. Before we will round this off, here are some back-to-back -back examples soloed out so you can study my process a bit closer.
to me this sounds awesome. It doesn't sound just like a fuzz pedal. It's a complete guitar sound with a hint of that fuzz character. And it does sound a bit different from all the thousand guitar rock albums out there recorded with Marshalls and Tube Screamers. Nothing wrong with those, but it's refreshing and inspiring when something sounds a bit different, don't you think? So do you have a secret sauce trick that you use when you record guitars? Please let me know down below. I would love to hear and maybe make a video about it. Here's another video recommended for you. Thank you for watching this one and goodbye.